Hello everyone and welcome back to 5 Tips in 5 Minutes. This week, sponsoring employee networks. Also known as ERGs or Employee Resource Group, employee networks are voluntary employee-led groups. They're usually led and participated in by employees who share a particular identity or characteristic or sets of identities or characteristics. They provide a safe space for employees to share their experiences, give each other mutual support, and they often include aspiring allies who want to understand the barriers to inclusion and be part of breaking them down. Obviously, we aren't all shaped by one particular aspect of our identity, so there may be some intersectionality to the networks. People may well be members of more than one. And some of the barriers that the different characteristics and identities experience are very much the same, so there can be a lot of overlap, and that's good. Their role is to amplify and explain the barriers to inclusion and advocate for equity in the business. There's a spectrum of employee networks from just providing an informal social place to chat through to strategically partnering with business leaders. Towards the strategic end of that spectrum, employee networks are often sponsored by a senior leader. And it's a very different role to the day to day leadership job. So here come my five tips for sponsoring an employee network effectively. Tip one is sponsor, don't lead. Sponsors are not there to tell their networks what to do. Employee networks are run by employees for employees. It can be really hard to step back and not give unsolicited direction or advice, but that's not what you're there for. You're there to listen, to learn and to serve. Tip two is to provide resources. Employee networks need a budget. They need to run education campaigns. They need to pay for speakers. And the leaders of the employee networks need protected time to do the work of the network. You can help them with this by possibly helping to get that protected time, maybe helping to negotiate reduced productivity targets. And you can support them by giving them training if they need it on managing a budget. You agree with them how it will be spent and then step back and let them get on with it. Tip three is to include your network leaders in business planning. And ask them to create their own plans in line with the business priorities that will serve the needs of their network. And when you're in business discussions away from the network, Consider how the decisions that are being made will impact the people in your network and advocate for inclusion. Tip four is to share information with your networks. Your employee opinion survey, for example, financial information, uh, any learning and development plans, and be guided by them, consult them on where, in particular, inclusion training should be focused. Tip five Pass the microphone at every opportunity. When you're talking about the employee network that you sponsor in public, invite the leaders of the network to do the talking. However approachable and inclusive you consider yourself to be, there's still a power dynamic. There's still an element of lack of trust in leaders. Employees are more likely to trust and engage with and act on things that they're hearing from one of their own. You will have sponsored successfully if the leaders of your employee network are building their own profile in the business. So to sum up, resist the urge to take over. You are there to serve. Provide resources, budget, training, time. Include your network leads in business planning. Share information with them generously and pass the microphone as often as you can. And a bonus tip, check in often. Don't expect your employee network leads to do all the running. That's it for this week. Happy sponsoring and I'll see you next time.